Hello everyone and welcome to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming, and welcome back to another episode of Canadians Abroad. This week we will focus on Kyle Lahren scoring his first goal for Club Rouge, Jordan Heidema scoring her first goal in the NWSL, Stefan Ustaki starting three consecutive matches in a row for FC Porto, plus a lot more in our Canadians Abroad. So hopefully you are all excited, and if you are, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and let's get into the update now. We are going to start off this week's Canadians Abroad episode in Germany with Alfonso Davies, who is back in action over the weekend. Davies started and played all 90 minutes as a left back in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Davies created four chances, had one shot, completed 90% of his passes, had 86 touches, 12 recoveries, he got an assist, and was the man of the match. His assist came from making a very well-timed run down the left flank. He took the ball on well and cut it back for Tell to smash home. Bayern went on to draw their third consecutive match in a row with a 2-2 draw against Stuttgart. With these results, Bayern remained third place in the table with a 3-3-0 record. Three draws in a row can easily mean it's time to panic, although this is a new Bayern side and they will need more time to adapt without their star man Robert Lewandowski. There are also reports that some players in the Bayern camp are becoming frustrated with Nagelsmann. However, Davies is not one of those players. He's really enjoying life right now down the left-hand side. He's making an incredible runs, having a big influence on matches, and despite the results not going his way, Davies is finding his best form. We are moving along now to France, where we are going to take a look at Jonathan David, who started over the weekend and played 78 minutes as a striker in a 3-4-2-1 system. This is the first time in a while Lille didn't line up in the 4-2-3-1 system. They trained all week in a back three as they wanted to change things up because they found it difficult to break down Nice who played with a back three similar to Marseille. In the match, David had one shot, 26 touches, and had a very frustrating match up front. He wasn't overly involved up front and found it difficult to influence the match, which led him to not playing all 90 minutes for the first time this season. Lille went on to lose 2-1 against Marseille to drop down to 8th place in the table with a 3-1-3 record. Lille have to lose at home next weekend and I have a feeling Fonseca could move David out to the wing and give Bayo an opportunity to start up front. We have seen performances like this in the past where David doesn't get distribution and he becomes very isolated when playing as a lone striker. I have a feeling with Bayo being a true number 9 if he gets brought back in the starting 11, it could mean that David shifts out to the right where we've seen him shine this season. Very curious to see if Fonseca might try something new against Toulouse next weekend and I kind of hope that he does. We are heading on over to Portugal now to take a look at Stefan Ustakio, who started once again for the third consecutive match in a row, playing all 90 minutes as a center mid in a 4-4-2 system. In the match, Steph created five chances, had 75 touches, took six corner kicks, had four recoveries, and once again played with such confidence, looking so calm on the ball. Porto went on to win the match 3-0 over Chavez to now sit with a 5-0-1 record and remain third place in the table. Eustachio has been so patient and worked very hard to break into this Porto starting 11. It's finally paying off as he's looked to lock down that starting place. Between pushing for the league title with Porto, playing in the Champions League, and the upcoming World Cup in November, this could be a massive few months for Stefan Eustachio. Us Canadian men's national team fans knew of Eustachio's quality. We've seen it every single time he was on the pitch for Canada, and it's fantastic to see that after all this time, Porto fans and Porto themselves are seeing it as well. He's looked so good, and I can't praise him enough, looking confident, growing as well. And if he's able to get these type of minutes at a club like this, playing at this level, it's only going to make him even better and even more confident come World Cup time. On the flip side of that result for Chavez, Steven Vittoria started and played all 90 minutes as a center back in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Vittoria had 52 touches, he had 3 clearances, 3 block shots, 3 interceptions, and he won 4 out of his 5 duels. Unfortunately though, for Vittoria, he was partially at fault for Porto's second goal of the match. It was a poor back pass to him, but he got caught in no man's land, and he was flat-footed as Trami skipped past him to set up Evan Elson to put it home into an empty net. With the loss, Chavez now sit 10th place in the table with a 2-2-2 two, two, two record. This was the first match this season that Vittoria didn't have a solid performance. It was against Porto and those matches will always be difficult for a club like Chavez, but they'll definitely be looking to bounce back next weekend. It was a very good test for Vittoria. It didn't quite go his way, but regardless, he still had a very impressive start to the season. And I'm really excited to see him in this form, joining up with Canada in a couple weeks. Moving along now to Belgium, we are going to take a look at Kyle Lahren, who for the first time this season started and played 86 minutes for Club Bruges as a left wing in a 4-3-3 system. Laren had 4 shots, created 1 opportunity, completed 93% of his passes, had 33 touches, and scored his first goal of the season and his first goal for Club Bruges. It was a very well taken goal as Ramchuk played in Laren who coolly dispatched it in the roof of the net. Club Bruges went on to win the match 2-0 and currently sit 3rd place in the table with a 6-1-1 record. They have now won 6 matches in a row in all competitions and this was a rare start for Laren and he absolutely had to take his opportunity, which he did. 
Let's hope that this will give him some confidence leading up to the September window. He went to Club Bruges to try to make a difference and become a starter. Things haven't went exactly to plan, but this is a great way to bounce back and try to break into that starting 11. As for Tejon Buchanan, he wasn't included in that match over the weekend and he's not included in the upcoming Champions League match as well against FC Porto. However, he did take to social media teasing everyone that he could be returning to action sooner rather than later. It will be huge for Buchanan to get back to full fitness. There's not really a player like him in the Canadiens national team. He's pacey, he's direct, he's an incredible finisher as well. I'm going to be very nervous he's not able to join up with this camp, but hopefully it looks like he's going to get back to full fitness ASAP. And if he is able to do that, there's no doubt about it. He will be involved in the World Cup at the very least, but hopefully we want to see him in this upcoming window as well. Jordan Heidema featured over the weekend, starting and playing 86 minutes as a striker in a 4-2-3-1 system. In the match, Heidema had six shots, 32 touches. She missed three good opportunities, including an open net where she put it off the post. However, she did score her first NWSL goal. She had her first effort slam off the defender, but it kindly fell for her to put in the back of the net on her second time of asking. Owell went on to draw the match 2-2 to remain fifth place in the table with a 7-7-4 record. It took a few matches, but Jordan Heidema is finally starting to find her feet in the NWSL. It's great to see, and I have a good feeling that more goals will follow for the talented young forward. Moving along now to France, we are going to take a look at Ashley Lawrence who had her first match of the season where she started and played all 90 minutes as a right back in a 4-3-3 system for PSG. Lawrence had an impressive match looking very solid down the right hand side to kickstart her season as PSG went on to pick up a 2-0 win to sit 6th place in the table with a 1-0-0 record. PSG pick up right where they left off last season as they'll be looking to push Lyon for the title this season. It's a bit of a different looking Leon side this season with El Kadisha Buchanan. PSG will be looking to capitalize on that and go all the way to try to get the title. If they are able to do so, we know that Ashley Lawrence will have a big say in that. She's a very talented player, very versatile as well, and I can't wait to see how they do this season. We have some wild news coming out of Besiktas surrounding Atiba Hutchinson as it was reported that Atiba Hutchinson's contract would be frozen by Besiktas due to having too many foreign players on the roster. Apparently, it was down to U.S. international Tyler Boyd or Atiba Hutchinson to see who will get that last place. Once it was rumored that Boyd was going to get that position, Besiktas supporters were furious at the news that their club legend would have his contract frozen, and they took to social media pleading for Atiba to be included in the roster. Whether it was the backlash from the fans, inaccurate reports, or a change of heart from Besiktas, they ended up registering Atiba and freezing the contract of Tyler Boyd and their fourth string keeper. This is big news for Atiba as it's being reported he's getting closer to full fitness, it would have been very harsh on a player who's given so much to this club to have his contract frozen leading up to the World Cup. Moving along to Turkey, we are checking in on Samuel Adekubi who started over the weekend and played all 90 minutes as a left back in a 4-3-3 system. In the match, Adekubi had 70 touches, 2 recoveries, 6 clearances, he completed 92% of his passes and had 2 accurate long balls. Hattaspor went on to lose the match 1-0 to sit 18th place in the table with an 0-1-4 record. One point from five matches is a very poor start to the season, however, in every match they lost, they only lost by one goal. The bounces and luck just aren't going their way right now, but despite sitting so low in the standings, Atakubi has looked very solid so far and he's picked up right where he left off last season. Julia Grosso featured once again for Juventus over the weekend, starting and playing 84 minutes as a center mid in a 4-3-3 system. Grosso looked strong in her second match of the season as Juventus went on to draw Inter 3-3 in a wild match that saw two 90-minute goals to start off their season with a 1-1-0 record and sit fourth place in the table. Juventus will be very disappointed not to pick up all three points. As for Grosso, she had a very positive start to this season so far and looks like she will play a major role for them as well. We have some big dual national news as reports coming out of Serbia along with the confirmation of Ivan Mitrovic state that Stefan Mitrovic will be called up for Serbia's next international window, putting an end to the speculation over his international future. This is a tough loss for the Canadian men's national team missing out on Flores and now Mitrovic. Hopefully at the very least it will light a fire to try to get other dual nationals to commit like Daniel Jefferson, Lucas Diaz, as well as Justin Smith. This was a massive decision for Stefan Mitrovic to make. It's never going to be an easy one and we wish him all the best with the Serbian men's national team. That now only leaves one Canadian men's national team player playing on Red Star, and that is Milan Borjan, who was in action over the weekend, starting in goal and playing all 90 minutes. Red Star went on to win their match 2-1 to move up the first place in the table with a 7-2-0 record. Their Europa League journey continues this Thursday as they take on Trasben Spore after losing their opening match of the tournament 1-0 to Monaco. Borjan continues to look very sharp in goal as well. Being able to play in Europe is big for him. I can't wait to see him join back up with the national team as we know he is such a leader to this side. And if Tiba isn't completely fit, he will be the captain that they will be relying on. Stopping on over in Switzerland now, we are taking a look at Liam Miller who started on the bench and was substituted into the match in the 58th minute. 
Miller had 21 touches, one shot, one successful dribble, and whipped in three accurate crosses as Basel went on to win 5-1 over Grasshopper to sit seventh place on the table with a 2-3-2 record. Miller made an impact coming from the bench and he will need to continue to put in performances like that if he wants to win back his starting 11 place. Corbiano and Schaffelberg are not slowing down their performances anytime soon. It will be a close race to see which wingers go to the World Cup. And if Miller wants to be that guy, he needs to get back in the starting 11 and continue to produce the way that we know he can. We had Jonathan David draw a blank over the weekend and he wasn't the only Canadian in league on to do that as EK Ubo did start over the weekend playing 45 minutes as a left mid in a 5-4-1 system getting subbed off at halftime. Ugbo did not have a good match playing at left mid, he switched over to right mid as well but it made little difference. Ugbo needs to be playing as a striker to best utilize him, we saw it last season when playing in a defensive minded Tuas side. He's not going to be overly involved, get very little touches but when an opportunity comes his way, like a true number 9, he will put the ball in the back of the net. Mama Balde who started at striker can also play in the wing and I'm hoping to see Ugbo go back to the middle for their next match because he looked very uncomfortable playing out wide. Twa went on to lose the match 1-0 against Lons to sit 13th place in the table with a 2-1-4 record. This is the type of football that Twa will play. They will always be defense-minded, but they do have a very intriguing front three. If Ubo can play as the number 9, Balde out on the left, and then having Ronnie Lopez on the right, those three should be able to create a lot of opportunities. It is very hard for a striker to not get a lot of touches and being overly involved, but still be sharp to put the ball in the back of the net. He played in a very similar way last season with Twa and scored 5 goals in 14 appearances which really helped them avoid relegation. I want to see that shift again because when he's playing out wide right now, Ubo just looks lost. He doesn't have a lot of touches as well and he isn't influencing the match the way that he could if he was up front. Stopping on over in Greece now, we are going to check in on Derek Cornelius who started over the weekend and played all 90 minutes once again as a center back in a 4-3-3 system. Cornelius completed 84% of his passes, had 4 clearances, 1 interception, he won all of his aerial duels and had a strong match once again. This has been a very impressive start to the season for both Cornelius and Pantelikos as they went on to win the match 2-1 to move up to 4th place in the table with a 2-1-1 record. Cornelius has done everything right so far to deserve a call up for the upcoming September window, however that place is still not guaranteed as Herman seems to favor Kennedy over Cornelius for that outside left centre back position and with Waterman's form he may take that final centre back place. The center back position becomes very interesting with the form of Waterman and Cornelius. Kennedy didn't start off very hot, but he's starting to pick it back up. Daniel Henry doesn't even start for TFC, but he is a big character player. I'm going to be very intrigued to see which center backs that Herman does go with when it comes to this upcoming September window, as well as the World Cup. Moving along now back to Germany, we are going to take a look at Scott Kennedy, who started once again over the weekend, playing all 90 minutes as an outside left center back in a 3-4-2-1 system. Kennedy had 49 touches, 5 clearances, 5 recoveries, he had 2 block shots and completed 85% of his passes as Jan Regensburg went on to lose the match 3-0 against Paderborn to sit 14th place in the table with a 2-2-4 record. They now only have 1 point out of their last 5 matches and have only scored 5 goals all season long as they look like they could be fighting relegation this season. Kennedy has now started 2 matches in a row playing 90 minutes in both and he seems to have found his way back into the starting 11. The timing could not be any better for Kennedy right now with the upcoming September window. It seemed for a while there that he wasn't going to get the playing time that he needed to be in form leading up to the camp, but fighting his way back in the starting 11 and playing relatively well should give him the advantage over a player like Derek Cornelius when it comes to John Herman's pecking order. Moving along now to the Netherlands, we are going to take a look at Charles Andreas Brim who started once again over the weekend, playing 78 minutes as a dual cam in a 3-4-2-1 system. Brim had 35 touches in the match, 4 recoveries, created 1 chance and had 2 successful dribbles. FC Eindhoven went on to draw the match 1-1 to sit 2nd place in the table with a 5-2-0 record. So far so good for Brim, he went back to FC Eindhoven to get minutes and he's definitely getting them right now. With the upcoming September window, I'm very curious to see if Brim will get called up or if he will lose his place to a player like Corbiano. Heading on over to Ukraine now, we are going to take a look at Manjakar James who started and played all 90 minutes as a centre back in a 4-2-3-1 system. James had another strong performance going up against one of the best teams in the league. It was a very close match, but unfortunately for Torna Moretz Odessa, they lost 2-1 against Shakhtar Donetsk, conceding a 96-minute winner to drop down to 13th place in the table with an 0-2-2 record. James has had a very positive start to this season, and I'd be curious to see if Herman is going to keep an eye on him for a potential recall to the national team. He hasn't played a match for Canada in a very long time. He is playing at a very solid level right now in Ukraine. But despite that, a lot of our center backs probably have a better shout to get into the September window as well. If James gets a recall to the national team, I'd expect it would be probably after the World Cup, if at all. Moving along now to MLS action, we are going to take a look at Maxine Crapo, who started in goal for LAFC over the weekend, making 6 saves, having 43 touches, 13 recoveries, and faced an XG of 2.28. 
In the match, he conceded two goals as 10 men LAFC fought hard but ended up losing the match 2-1 against FC Dallas. They remain first place in the West with a 19-3-8 record. LAFC have dropped a lot of points recently. Their form is definitely slipping. However, they had such a big lead at the top of the West, more than likely they're going to still end up in first place. Elsewhere in MLS action, we had two Canadians going head to head. It was Jacob Schaffelberg from Nashville taking on Raheem Edwards from LA Galaxy. In the match, Schaffelberg had 19 touches. He created two chances and had four recoveries as Nashville went on to draw the match 1-1 against the Galaxy to sit fourth place in the West with a 12-10-9 record. Nashville are 4-1-0 in their last five matches. Schaffelberg joined a high-flying club at the right time that looks destined for playoff action. On the other side of that result, Edwards started and played 71 minutes as a left back in a 4-4-2 system. In the match, Edwards completed 89% of his passes, had 61 touches, one clearance, five recoveries, and had two successful dribbles. With the draw, the Galaxy remain eighth place in the West with an 11-7-11 record. They should have went on to win this match as they dominated shots, chances, and had another missed penalty from Hernandez. However, in the 99th minute, Ricky Pooch went on to step up to take the penalty and put it home to save a point for the Galaxy. This is now three draws in a row and four draws in their last five matches for LA. They need to find a way to win these matches if they want any chance to sneak into the playoffs. It was a lively performance once again from Edwards. He had a lot of the ball. Unfortunately though, that final product just wasn't there to help the Galaxy get the points that they need. They're gonna have some work to do. They have a couple of matches at hand and there's still a good opportunity they can find a way to make playoffs. Moving along now to the NWSL, we are going to check in with the Houston Dash who lined up in a 4-3-3 system over the weekend, which saw Alicia Chapman start at left back, Sophia Schmidt started at center mid, and Michelle Prince start at right wing. In the match, Chapman played 70 minutes, Prince played 84, and Schmidt played the entire game, having a very strong one as well in the heart of the midfield. Houston went on to draw the match 1-1 against Angel City FC. With that result, Houston now sit fourth place in the table with an 8-6-5 record, only two points off of first place. That is all the time we have for in this episode of Canadians Abroad. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub as well. Our next goal is 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to help us get there, dropping a sub will definitely do that. Also, be sure to subscribe over to the One Soccer YouTube channel for all the best Canadian soccer coverage. My name is Josh Deming. Thank you all for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers, friends.